We live at a time where by death is considered as a taboo. And the demand is we need to accept what has happened and move on with life. And where death is accepted, it's again totally played down, you know, with phrases like, don't worry, it shall be well. She was too sick to make it. At least they have been able to rest. Now, the Bible says in the book of Job, chapter number 14 and verse number 1, a man who is born of a woman is of few days and full of trouble. He comes forth like a flower and fades away. He flees like a shadow and does not continue. Our topic today is entitled Grief. One of the things that is not handled in many platforms, particularly in the spiritual fraternity. Welcome to our streams of hope. Last Tuesday, we were able to talk about how you can make sure you do not get stuck in loss and grief. I want to invite you to share this stream with a friend. I welcome you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. The only good gift you can give me is to hit that subscribe button, even as we study on this matter to do with grief. Now, Ezekiel chapter number 18 and verse number 20, again the Bible makes it very clear that the soul that sins shall surely die. This makes it known to us that grief is an outcome of death. And the purpose or the reason why we die is because of sin from the beginning. Man was not meant to die. But when Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden, God made it as a penalty that a soul that sins then has the penalty of dying. And today we die because of this one thing that we call sin. And the immediate thing when we die is the response to death, which is actually grief. And what is this that we are calling grief? Now grief is a natural emotional response to the loss of someone who is close, such as a family member or such as a friend. Grief occurs in different ways. Uh, grief can show up in illness, loss of good health, it can show up in loss of body parts, it can show up in the loss of a dissolutionized marriage relationship that ends into a divorce. Loss can also show up in the loss of a job or the loss of something that we really value. You know, it comes in different types. The losing of a loved one, the losing of part of our bodies, the losing of a potential future. At times, we have so many high hopes into the future and things just do happen and you lose it. This reminds me of one of our, uh, a friend of mine who was working with the police force and when uh, there were those terror attack in Garissa, he was one of the victims into it and many were killed but by God's grace his life was saved. Uh, but you can imagine that was a loss of a potential opportunity. When I was sharing with him, he was like, if I was in the police force up to today, I will be in this kind of uh, ranking. So in other words, loss can come in as a loss of opportunity. And the thing that comes with loss is actually the intense feeling of sadness. It's all about the feeling of a shock and numbness in our own body. We may get into denial, we may get into anger. Grief is the ultimate loss or the price that we pay for the loss of love. Grief is that intense sorrow that robs us our joy. Grief can be exhausting. Grief can be uh, depressing. And when it happens, as much as loss is part of life, as we have been able to see from the book of Job, that a man born of a woman is born of a few days, they are full of troubles, and uh, they are a few days. So in other words, death has an expiry date. The amazing thing is that this expiry date is only known to one person, and that is God. Because the Bible says it is appointed for a man to die, and after that judgment. In other words, death is an appointment, and it's an appointment whereby only God has kept the due date for each one of us. And that having been said, and as much as scripture has much to say about death, this does not make it any easier at all. 
the death of a loved one uh, takes its toll on us and leaving us behind to a life of grief, to a life of mourning, to a life that looks like it has no ever ending of the emotional intense feelings that are attracted by this happening. I want us to make this clear so far that grief is so personal and different people grieve differently. Each and every one of us grief differently for different people because what happens in grief is that each one of us grieve the version of the person they knew and how they knew about this person. And grief can bring you to a place of feeling totally lost, totally confused, totally having lost hope. And every loss has the center of it. And grief, when it happens, it takes the center stage of our own lives and it overwhelms us. It cripples our operations. We feel like nothing is moving again in life. It consumes our program. It consumes our relationship. It consumes the life that we had and the future that we dearly had held together with the ones that we loved that have departed from us. Now, the loss of a loved one can make you feel lonely, even in the midst of many people. And uh, with all the people around us, we can feel alone. And if you feel soon that way, you need to look for someone who you can be able to tell the truth and share with them what exactly you're going through during that moment of grief. Today, as I share on this topic of grief, I want you to walk with me on this journey of grief and what does this journey of grief look like. Uh, one of the things that happens immediately that we lose a loved one is feelings of shock. Our body gets into a moment of shock and numbness. A moment where you feel like you're stuck. You don't believe what you're hearing. And the first response of grief is actually denial. And in this time and stage of denial, is the difficult of accepting that this has actually happened. Is the difficult of coming to terms that indeed my brother is not there, my mother is not there, my spouse is not there. At times you find people even, you know, talking to the dead body, shaking the dead body to talk to them. I'll never forget a death experience that we went through and uh, the spouse of that man would look at the husband and shake him and say uh, you can't you can't go you can't go let us hack this we can agree for you to come back you know there is that shaking of somebody because the first thing is you are in denial you don't want to accept that those people are gone now this feeling of denial causes you to think like this is a bad dream I wish I can wake up to a good dream another day now the other thing is that you also feel like, I don't want to trust the source of the information. I remember when my nephew drowned, trying to save the son. And the first time the news came to us, uh, my brother was telling me, we can't accept it. We need to go to the ground and see, and see for ourselves, and hear from someone else whether what we are hearing is the real thing. So there is those feeling like uh, the sources is unreliable. There is that idea of wanting to avoid the topic. In other words, denial is a response that actually brings us to a place whereby we are not coming into terms with the loss. And the immediate time we are in denial, the next journey or stage we get into is a stage that I will call the stage of anger. This is by a guy called Kubra Ross who has done this and uh, I want to acknowledge that this is actually some materials that I've been able to get from this guy. But uh, the second stage is actually the stage of anger and in this stage of anger you may direct your anger to anyone, to your husband, to the people around you, to even God wondering where were you God. I've prayed about this for a long time. We had an agreement. I fasted for 21 days and God is this what you're giving me so it's a moment of anger it's a moment of a lot of pain and bitterness and at this moment you know you're blaming the medical doctor you're blaming uh, the family members that did not care or did not come through to give support it's a season of 
blaming. You can feel anger towards God or any other spiritual power or somebody who had reached out to help you with money to take this person to hospital and they have died on the way because they delayed the money and you knew they were in their capacity to be able to help you. You can start being able to blame them and being angry with them. It's a time whereby you experience very short tempers or loss of uh, patience is a time whereby the family is blaming one another or you even blame yourself and you are like you feel like you would have done better than what has happened it's a time of anger and when anger sets in i want to encourage you it is okay to get angry only do not allow yourself to sleep angry look at how you can be able to deal with that anger and the best way of dealing with anger is going back to the word of god allowing god to minister to us allowing god to speak to us the word of god says you cannot get angry but do not allow the sun to go down when you are angry anger is a common response in the journey of loss and grief and after you're done with the anger then you get into the bargaining the bargaining you want to imagine you are reaching out to an agreement so that you do not deal with the loss. You may also regret past actions that you imagine could, in, could have spared the person. So it's a stage of what I call what if, what if, if only, if only I had brought her sooner to the hospital. If only when I was doing her test, I would have actually not only tested the stomach, I would have actually tested the chest because maybe he has died of pneumonia. You are like, if only I was able to make sure that I make my journey in haste to go and see them, they may not have died if I would have arrived early. It is this situation where the sister to Lazarus is actually telling Jesus, Jesus, if you are here in good time, if you are here earlier, our brother may not have died. So the time of bargain is the time of where you are like, if I had even taken him to come and stay with me in my own house, maybe I would have given him good diet, maybe this would not have taken their life, is what we call what if stage, what if I did this, what if I did this. I want to encourage somebody, if you are in those levels whereby you are actually suffering guilt and you feel like there was something that you needed to do to save your brother, to save your mother, to save your sister, or to save this loved one, I want you to know that it is the plan of the enemy to plunge us into guilt. It is the plan of the enemy to cause us to blame ourselves. Because remember what we said in the previous stream, uh, that death consumes. And after consuming one loved one, it wants to continue taking away our peace, taking away our joy, taking away our finances, and taking away our mental wellness. I want to encourage you, life is limited and life has an expiry date. And there is no amount of what thief can be able to save life because the days of a man are numbered and they are written in the palm of God's hands and it's only God who knows. So I want you to free yourself from the guilt to know that life belongs to God and only God can give life and only God can take away life. So this is a time of bargaining, bargaining, you feel like, what if, what if. Now at that point you have been able to overcome the denial, you've been able to overcome the anger and now you're bargaining because now you feel like you have accepted the person is dead but you feel like you had an opportunity to save your life. May God help you accept that life belongs to God. And only God can give life and only God can take life away and there is no amount what if that would ever save the life of a person uh, the other stage that we get into our journey of grief is the stage of depression this is when we experience emotions that are associated with helplessness hopelessness you feel like it's over you feel like you know there is that emotional detachment you feel like you know life is not worth a living during the period of uh, depression is a time whereby you are experiencing feelings of sadness a loss of interest of things that you normally do there is the loss of appetite there is change in your sleeping pattern or lack of sleep completely there could be significant changes in weight either you add weight 
or you stress it or either you become lighter there could be the feelings of agitated and being restless or the feeling of worthlessness guilty and decreased concentration at this point nothing but matters you feel like life is getting out of your own life now the last stage or the last uh, thing that you experience in the journey of loss and grief is this place we call acceptance the place of acceptance is whereby you are eventually coming to this reality and embracing the death and you are like yes maybe you have visited the mortuary severally you've been able to see the body of your beloved and you're like indeed this person is actually not there and when we reach this state of acceptance we no longer deny the struggle against our grief and we yield ourselves to grief is a time where we work and focus our energy on celebrating the life of the one that we loved. We choose to cherish the moments that God gave us with them. We choose to look for the best parts of their life that we can be able to remember. And we choose to relate with the best part that impacted our own personal lives. When you get into acceptance now, you get into the positivity of it and say, this I am glad that this years that we lived together, I was able to invest in this young man in this way or that way. I remember our happy moments. And in this journey of loss, I want us to be encouraged in this one thing, that grief is biblical. Jesus grieved Lazarus, and it is good for us to grieve our loved one. But one of the things that we need to be reminded, that even as we grieve our loved ones, is that the Bible says, uh, in the book of Romans chapter number 8 and verse number 28 and we know that all things work together for good for they that love the Lord and have been called according to his purpose there may be nothing good in the death of your mother in the death of your brother but in that situation God is working out something that is good and we need to be encouraged knowing that oh, blessed are those who mourn because they will be comforted. People who have never lost a loved one do not understand the measure of comfort that comes from the Holy Spirit and God our Father. I have lost three people in my family, actually, for now. I lost my mom, I lost my brother, I lost my dad, and I lost my nephew. And through that journey, I have discovered that there is a God who sits with us in the moments of mourning. There is hope beyond the grave for they that love the Lord. And let's be reminded, the cause of death is sin. If we can trust God to run away from sin, then we have this assurance that we will see the land of the living even as we experience the second resurrection for them that are born again in our Lord Jesus Christ, particularly if we make sure we deal with every manner of sin in our lives. May the Lord richly bless you. It's always a blessing to come to us in our streams of hope. And I want to believe this is of great help for us. Share the stream with somebody. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Allow me to pray with you even during this time and season. Our God and our Father, we thank you. We bless you that you are the giver of life and you are the taker of life. Bring us to terms with death. Bring us, dear God, to a place of consolation and comfort that death is a transition, is a process that each one of us must go through. And in the journey of our grief, we thank you for this assurance that you will be together with us to the very end. We honor you and we bless you. In Jesus' name, we do pray and we all say amen and amen and amen. May the Lord richly bless you. Share the stream with a friend.